okay in last video we talked about different kinds of tensors so now in this video uh, let's talk about why tensor operations are needed because if you see any if you work on any kind of neural network at its very basic any problem you can solve with the neural network you can we can basically show that it's nothing but a series of tensor operations okay so that's why uh, understanding why tensors tensor operations are needed and what are the different kinds of tensor operations available it is very important over here so in this video we will try to take a intuition then in the next video onwards we will try to see some some more about the tensor operation different kinds of tensor operations basically so let's start now now to to make things very easier what i did is is we will we will work with the how how signals are how different data are getting processed through the neural network we try to understand that one and from there we'll try to see how, why tensor operations are needed so let's say we have two layers of neural network over here okay one is layer one which is nothing but our input layer where inputs are coming i1 and i2 over here and we have another layer which is which is nothing but our output layer okay so the layer 2 which is also having two nodes but this is the output layer over here we are generating the output over here so we do not have any kind of hidden layer over here we have a input layer which is accepting the inputs and we have a output layer which is basically generating the output over here now if you if you have followed the videos i created before on the basics of neural network over there we we discussed very briefly that the input layer the neurons available in the input layer are a very specific one because they do not have any kind of activation function so they whatever data they receive they output the same signal as is okay so this is very special kind of inputs or basically like if you talk about other neurons where we pass the weightage input over there right and then there is activation function which work on that particular input and generate the output over there right but for the input layer this does not happen so it is the whatever i1 is going inside the i1 also come outside as well from this neurons but it does not happen with the output layer because there is an activation function over here okay now while discussing that we also discussed like the the weightage the weights over here is also needs to be assigned so let's say from from the input layer node one to the output layer node one so basically whatever the output is generated by this this guy over here basically it's nothing but i1 over here right the same output will be passed to all the nodes in the next layer that is what we discussed that's the architecture we discussed till now right so let's say from here from for this particular signal the weight is 1 1 that means it is coming from it is coming from this node 1 to node 1 that is what that, that's why this notation is actually uh, i like this kind of notation so what here you can always express this one with 1 comma 1 as well whatever way you want okay now similarly the signal which is going the same signal which is going from 1 to 2 let's have the weightage 1 2 subscript 1 and superscript 2 over here so similarly from the layer 1 which is our input layer node 2 to layer 2 that means the outputs layer node 1 is weight 2 to 1 and similarly for weight 2 2 over here okay that this is the basic structure we will be starting with and we will try to see how these signals are getting processed how this data are getting processed and try to see how we can why we need to use tensor operations to make things simpler over here now as we said like input layers do not have any kind of activation functions they just pass the signal as is but in the output layer we have some kind of activations function over here so that's why we will be writing this kind of symbol over here okay so so this is our arrangement now let's see what's going on over here so first we will try to analyze the output layer node 1 over here okay similarly we will try to analyze the node 2 over here what's going on 
so if i just go 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 to the next one so we have our layer 2 and node 1 analysis over here so what is happening over here is from the node 1 this signal is coming up that means this particular i signal is coming up with weight 1 1 that is feeding up over here from the node 2 this i2 is coming up over here with weight w1 w2 1 over here right which is feeding up over here so now over here we have a activation function now there are a lot of activation functions available but but we will for for the sake of simplicity we will take the simple function the sigmoid function over here for our activation function okay we can use any other kinds of activation function as well based on the use case so so this is our if you remember the video I created for the neural network intuition, so this is our sigmoid function over here, correct? Now over there, if you see the x, we feed it over here, is the weighted sum of the inputs, correct? That means the input i1 into its weight plus the input i2 into its weight over here. We pass it as a x over here, correct? And this x getting calculated by this particular formula 1 by 1 plus e to the power minus x which generates the output fx over here now if we think about it this fx is nothing but the output o1 over here right so that means our input signal are getting processed by this particular function and based on this function output whether we are whether we are getting output or not so that is getting generated over here the output o1 over here correct so that means if we we can write something like this one our output o1 is basically 1 over 1 plus e to the power minus x x is the weighted sum of this particular input over here okay so this is what it is happening for the layer one sorry the node one in our output layer similarly similar stuff is happening for the node two as well correct because from the node one the same signal is coming with this particular weight to the node two and similarly for the node two of the layer one this signal is coming up with this particular weight which is generating the output o2 and we have taken the same activation function over here sigmoid function and basically if you if we just talk about the input of the sigmoid function over here it will be i1 into this particular weight and then i2 into this particular weight right so if you see like for all this different different outputs basically we applied separate weight over, over here the the output even though from one to one the output is same as one to this particular two nodes right but we have assigned separate weights over here because it is going to the separate separate nodes over here now similarly our fx is the output o2 over here right and we can write something like o2 equals to one over this this we just passed this particular x over here in this equation over here right now now one thing is very prominent over here if you if you have noticed over here is for for each and every node when we are calculating the input signal going into this particular node if you see for for this particular node 2 so we are basically taking the weightage average of this the no, the output of the previous node correct and then we are passing to this activation function over here to generate the output now think about this scenario when we have millions of neurons available right and there are millions of layers available over here what will happen so in this case if we just try to go through each and every node then try to calculate the output of the previous node then calculate the weighted uh, weighted sum over here maybe I, I if i would have said average before maybe that's wrong we did sum over here right so weighted sum and then passing to this sigmoid function will be will be very repetitive work right and if we try to do it through a program it will not be much an efficient program over here correct just like just like this particular neural network over here where we have we have many hidden layers over here we have input layers and output layers and for each and every layer we have many nodes as well okay so this is a very simple one actually like when we talk about a real life neural network it is it has much more neurons and much more layers hidden layers over here okay so that's why so that's why it is very much inefficient when we work on each and every node level 
if if we just try to write a code for each and every node level over here okay so the question arises can we use tensors over here to solve this problem okay now let's let's try to reason through it so we will try to see the similar similar setup we have having it right two layers inputs and outputs they are connected with different uh, out uh, basically we, are, we have assigned different different weights for the different different output signals over here okay from the previous layer now think about this guy over here those two inputs i1 and i2 over here okay now we can define a vector input vector over here something like this one that we can define because it is having a single dimension that's the across the different it, the, the dimension is nothing but the inputs over here correct and we talked about different types of tensors over here and vector is the one dimensional tensor over here right now let's let's talk about another kind of thing called weight matrix so if you th if you see this weights over here w11 w12 21 and 22 we can create or we can basically represent this particular data in a matrix format called this one okay and we we just let's say give it a name called weight matrix over here and if you see it it has two dimensions over here right see the, if you see it like for for the nodes node one this these two signals are coming out even though these are the same signal but we are assigned two different weights because it is going to do two different nodes over here right now this one if we just arrange in a column wise format right so this is this is becoming the weight vector for the node 1 similarly for node 2 we have a weight vector 1 or w21 and w22 over here if we just keep those two weight vectors side by side we form this particular matrix over here right so where this particular dimension is actually the node level dimension for a particular node if you see for the node 1 these two weights are going right w11 and w21 sorry for w11 and from the node 2 this these weights are going and if we see this particular dimension over here it is nothing but for from the source node what are the different weights are coming up right if you see this dimension is going to the destination node over here which weights are going into the for the for the all the signals which is for the destination node over here right now with this two things the input vector and the weight matrix over here let's carry on and and if we just take the dot product of it okay now in matrix dot product is a very simple operation but there are a lot of matrix multiplication as well but we will talk about only the dot product over here and this is how it is defined now first thing you need to check is when you want to multiply two matrices over here the number of columns in the first matrix should be equals to the number of rows in the second matrix so that is the first rule you need to check it over here okay and and if you see the matrix are matrices are like size wise it is two by two matrix over here right the number of rows we tell it first then the number of columns over here two by two and this is two by one over here so the resultant matrix will be two by two into two by one that means it will be two by one matrix over here so this is how matrix multiplication happen we take each and every row okay and then we multiply by the column wise how we do the multiplication element wise that means the first element of the row will be multiplied with the first element of the column then we will take the running total as well plus the second element of the of this particular row will be multiplied with the second element of this particular column over here okay and it will be written in the first position over here similarly for the second row also we will be doing the same stuff and we will be basically multiplying with this particular column over here and be even in the second position so the resultant output will be looking something like this one over here okay and if you just remember this is nothing but the x values we are passing to this second this 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 particular 
uh, this this layer right this nodes over here right because if you remember from the when we discussed separately for each and every node wise what we passed to this particular sigmoid function we passed i1 into w11 correct into i2 into w21 correct so that is what is the first element of this particular resultant matrix similarly the x value we are passing to the node 2 over here is i1 w1 2 correct into i2 w2 2 so that is what we are passing to the second node over here to this second node sigmoid function correct so that is what is the second element of this matrix that means if we just write or if we just take the dot product of the weight matrix and the vector now the input vector that means the basically for the input layer the output is basically the same as the input so that means output into the weight matrix over here so i name it as input vector because when we talk about two layers where we are only having inputs and outputs we the the input layer output is same as the inputs over here when we'll talk about some hidden layers we i'll show you some example as well over here how it works it works in similar fashion but the naming convention is little bit different over there okay so if we just take the output vector from a particular layer and then multiply or basically take the dot product with the weight matrix we get the inputs for this second layer the next available layer over here correct now so as i said so this guy was passed as an input for the layer 2 node 1 and this guy as a passed as a input as layer 2 node 2 over here now what we do we after getting that particular weight matrix and the input vector multiplication the basically the inputs of the layer 2 we pass it to the activation function over here right so so this this guy as i said this is basically forming the input vector for the layer 2 over here now and then the same stuff we are we are basically passing through this sigmoid function over here now let's say we uh, consider the weight matrix as w and input vector as wi so then the what will be the output of the layer 2 it will be the this particular stuff which is nothing but the x value over here right that is the input of the layer 2 passed to the activation function then it generates the output over here correct so hopefully this this concept was clear over here right where when we multiply the weight matrix with the output vector over here okay we will we will when we will talk about the three layers architecture we will see the difference over here so when when we will basically multiply this weight matrix with the input vector we basically get the input vector for the next layer over here okay so from the layer one you are talking about the layer two inputs over here now let's talk about what happens when we have more than two layers so in this case let's talk about this particular architecture where we have layer one which is nothing but our input layer as is we have layer two which is nothing but our hidden layer over here the middle layer over here okay and we have layer three which is acting as a output over here okay now now over here the this is how the weights will be there w so i have given w1 that means these weights are basically assigned to the outputs of the layer one so that's why i have given w1 1 1 w1 1 2 something like this one okay similarly the weights assigned for for the layer 2 will be similarly written over here and if you if i just if I just recap for the input layer, we do not have any kind of activation function because we just pass the signal as is. But for rest of the layer nodes, we have a activation function over there. Correct. And similar way we pass the weights over here. We assign the weights over here. So as we are talking about the output signals from the layer two. So that's why the weights are two, eight, two, one, one. Okay. Something like this one. Okay. So this is our current scenario now. Now, now think about it. What will be, what will be happening? So let's say initially when we, if we, if, let's say we are tracking the signal from here till our output over here. Okay. The first thing we can write is something like this one. 
output of the layer one that means whatever is available over here is the input of the layer one right because it's a input layer we do not have any kind of act activation function over here so as is so we can write something like this one okay now let's say whether we can write something like this one or not output of the layer 2 that means the values or the data available over here so how we will get the output of the layer 2 is first of all we need to calculate the input of the layer 2 so what will be the input of the layer 2 it will be the previous layer output which is nothing but the output from the layer 1 okay into their corresponding weight matrices that means the vector of the output layer into the weight matrix of the output layer over here okay so that will generate this this particular dot product will be generating the inputs for the layer 2 and if we just pass it through the activation function we will get the output of the layer 2 over here right similarly for the outputs of the layer 3 which is nothing but our actual outputs over here what will be happening over here so we need to take the first the dot product of the weights assigned from the layer 2 to layer 3 signals then we have to take the vector of the layer 2 outputs over here okay then we have to pass it through the activation function over here then we will be generating the outputs of the layer 3 okay so this is how the signals are getting processed over here and if you if you take any kind of problem in neural network you can you can it can be boils down to the basic tensor operations over here so that's why it is very much important to understand how tensors operations happen in the neural network okay so this is the one of the operations uh, basically actually two of the operations we talked about one is the matrix multiplication another is the matrix element level operation which is nothing but the activation function is working over here okay so in the next videos we'll try to talk about more about different kinds of matrix or the basically the tensor operations we can do so hopefully this video was helpful see you in the next video